Government 2305 American Federal Government Module 1.07 Equality, Reality or Fiction? When the French writer and philosopher Alexis de Tocqueville first arrived on the shores of the United States in 1831, he was immediately taken by what he observed was widespread equality in American society. This is something that a European, even in the 1830s, was not accustomed to seeing. In one of his first letters home, de Tocqueville reported watching serving staff in a tavern sit down at the next table to drink and eat along with the paying guests. America was a society where people from all ranks and life, walks of life shook hands, discussed politics, and chased money. He noted that everyone seemed to be equals. Tocqueville concisely placed this thought into the first sentence of his now classic book, Democracy in America. For our purposes, the term equality will refer to the idea that every citizen enjoys the same privileges, status, and rights before the law. As we will see in later chapters, this is core to the idea of equal rights, which should not be confused with liberties that are addressed in the Bill of Rights, which are described as civil liberties. There are three kinds of equality. Social equality, where all individuals have the same status in society and there are no fixed social classes like there were in Europe. Political equality, where all citizens have the same political rights and opportunities, especially the right to vote. And economic equality, where the, there are only a few differences in wealth between citizens. As we saw in the last module, today the nation has shifted towards inequality. And some might argue that, with the events of the past two years, social equality and political equality, especially among non-white minority groups, are also being threatened. Inequality in America has reached levels not seen in almost a century. One illustration of national differences in economic inequality arises from the salary gap. In 1965, the median or, or typical uh, American chief executive officer made 26 times more than a typical worker in his or her firm. In Japan today, that figure is roughly the same. But in the contemporary United States, the median CEO makes 300 to 500 times the salary of the average employee, depending on the study that you see. Is this a problem for the idea that all men are created equal? American public policies and public opinion often endorse the race to wealth. People who have one great success, hedge fund managers, basketball stars, bank executives, and breakthrough entrepreneurs should enjoy the wealth that they accumulate. On the other side, critics charge that the richest 1% take advantage of everyone else. Tax laws and other rules are tilted in their favor. This is an old debate that has gone back and forth throughout American history. Should we encourage or discourage the accumulation of terrific fortunes? What should we do with the problem of homelessness. Many Americans accept high levels of economic inequality, contending that these are not fatal to our hopes for the egalitarian society. That's because of an important distinction between equal opportunity and equal outcome. Equal opportunity is the idea that every American has a similar chance in life. Each person gets one vote and the process should be transparent and open to all. In economics, it means that every individual gets a fair shot at achieving the American dream, whether you're white or black, Anglo or Latino, male or female, rich or poor. 
Equal opportunity means you have a similar opportunity to influence the political process and to win economic success. But as you see in the picture on the left, equal opportunity says if you can't see over the ballpark fence, everybody gets the same size box. So the shorter you are, the more disadvantaged you are. That little short kid is not going to see over that fence. Equal op outcome, in contrast, is the idea that a society guarantees not only opportunity, but also results. Some nations reserve a minimum number of seats in the national legislature for women or specific ethnic groups. And as we have already seen, others keep their taxes high and offer extensive social benefits, knowing that these will keep successful people from getting too far ahead of everyone else. The United States aims for equal opportunity. But if you look at equal outcome, now what we've done is the taller kid has no box, the middle kid has one box, and the shorter kid has two boxes, and everybody gets to see over the fence. So that's equal outcome. Some final thoughts. Today, the United States aims for equal opportunity. The winners fly in private jets. The losers may end up living on the streets with nothing. But questions and hard political choices about equal opportunity remain. How do we give people a real chance to affect the governing process? How much education is enough to help ensure that an individual can make it in the marketplace? Do we need to provide child care and early reading programs? And what do we do about past injustices? Does the long legacy of slavery, segregation, white privilege, and repressive policies towards Native Americans require our society to offer compensation to those groups? What about inheritance laws that permit some people to start life with billions and others with nothing? These questions return us to the same policy debates we introduced during the discussion of positive and negative liberties. Should we guarantee the basics or simply protect individual choices and rights and let every person run the race alone? Concern has grown in recent years that the gap between the rich and the poor has grown so large that it destroys equality of opportunity. For most of the nation's history, middle class Americans had the highest average incomes in the world. As the gap between the rich and the poor continues to widen, liberals warn that growing disparities are creating a land of few, a few billionaires and many hungry children. Conservatives respond that the effort to redistribute wealth from the rich to the poor discourages entrepreneurs from innovating. Expanding wealth at the top, they say, will help the many through job creation. So let's review. Equality means that every citizen enjoys the same privileges, status, and rights before the law. There are three types of equality. Social, political, and economic. Social equality means that all individuals have the same status in society and there are no fixed social classes. Political equality means that all citizens have the same political rights and opportunities, including the right to vote. Economic opportunity or economic equality means that there are only small differences in wealth between the citizens of a nation. Today, America generally aims for equal opportunity rather than equal outcome although heated discussions raise over what society must provide to ensure for equal opportunity. Over time, the United States has gone from the most heated, most equal society in the world to one that is considerably less equal than other wealthy nations. The past 35 years in particular have been a sharp spike in inequality. 
political uh, American politics has come to emphasize other ideas like negative liberty, individualism, the American dream, getting ahead over equality. Still, the United States is a dynamic and fast-changing nation. Today, most Americans, both conservatives and liberals, have begun to call for renewed efforts to increase equality of opportunity. Black Lives Matter protests and speakouts around the country in 2020 and 2021 frequently featured demands for equity, including wealth. Economic inequality may be one of the hottest political issues facing Americans today. 